Rams and the Lions, Colts and the Texans, Cardinals and the Bills, uh, Vikings, Giants, all the marketing <laughs> games and more. <laughs> Welcome everyone to NFL Week 1. I'm Eddie, that's Jim, that's Corbin. You guys know we are going through all of your props and all your parlays to get everyone ready to turn a profit and there is no time to waste. Happy Sunday and happy Week 1, everyone. Uh, we always started the show last year with uh, just weather report. It's obviously much more important uh, later on in the season that we get, but we want to be consistent here. Does not look like there's going to be uh, much weather in any games. I guess the only thing may be Arizona Buffalo with a little bit of wind, but 15, 20 miles an hour um, gusts around 25 miles an hour. Uh, Corbin, can I do my, my little wind rant? Uh, you can. That you I can. Doing? <laughs> it doesn't matter in football if the wind – is 20 miles an hour because they play in these things called stadiums and the stadiums have walls. And when they show the camera angle of the flag on top of the stadium blowing, just remember <laughs> they don't play the game up there on top of the stadium where the flag is blowing. They are down inside the stadium. So don't overreact to the wind. Now, once we get to 30 miles an hour, yes, you have my attention. Uh, we also go over uh, injury report week one. Not a whole lot to go over, Jim. I guess Jamar Chase would probably be the big name with a little bit of uncertainty, but um, I don't really see anything that's uh, jumping off the page here. I think we're pretty good. Uh, Corbin, how are you, how, uh, how's your mental space here uh, with Jordan Love? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Just pray. Hope, uh, maybe, maybe not watch the next couple of weeks and just hope he comes back in a – what is it? The expectant is like four, five, six weeks. So hope, hope, hope for the best. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to break down all of your uh, props categories. Corbin's going to do his alternate line. We call it the alt universe. And then Jim, so happy to have him because we're going to uh, really concentrate on the offense and defensive lines. It's super important. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're finally going to talk a little bit more in depth about those. And we'll give out some sack props as well. If you guys could hit the like button and subscribe to the channel really helps us out guys. Let's just jump right into the passing props and we will start with the passing yards over or under uh, Corbin. I know you're very high on the Texans this year and uh, the books, they are not giving you any, uh, they're not giving you any love on Stroud <laughs> at 277 and a half big number, but you I'm yeah, you still like it. I I like it again, but the line is is far too big for me to play. I'd it, it's one of those where it you kind of can't play like most of the time we talk about. Do you rather play the receivers or the quarterback? This is one where you definitely I don't feel like you could pick the receivers. So if you uh, like them to have a big passing game, you kind of have to pick Stroud. Uh, I don't know if you want me to mention it now, but Stroud passing touchdowns is one of my favorite plays of the week. It's at uh, one and a half. It's it was juiced to minus 165 when I last looked at it. So I would put that with one of my old spread pieces that will come to at some point. He had two in uh, each of the head-to-heads -head heads versus the Colts last year. Now ha obviously has the Stefan Diggs addition. And you could really see his confidence just grow throughout the year. He really finished the year strong. He has so many options, as I just mentioned, in the passing game. Even if they double coverage Diggs, they're still... Tank Dell, Nico Collins, there's just so many options. The Colts have a pretty average pass defense. The secondary is poor. And I almost feel like this game could have shootout potential again. So I could I could quite easily see him going over one and a half passing touchdowns. Uh our our secondary is not average. It's bad. The Colt, <laughs> the Colt, the Colt secondary is, yeah. is bad. They they're young. Um, they don't have a lot of experience. And the other thing that really hurts them is that their defensive line is good. They're tough to run on, but that's why you'll see them. I, I it, it, it's interesting because I I was almost looking at some of the pass attempts uh, with the Colts, mm -hmm. but thirty five and a half. The books are not giving us uh, much much to deal with. But yeah, Richardson. I mean, he didn't play a ton last year, but I believe like what he was like the number one or two quarterback per fan, like fantasy points per game based on what he played. So yeah, this has this has shootout written all over it. So. Um, Jim, can I interest you in Jacoby Brissett? <laughs> I, I got to tell you, this is right up my alley. This is, right, this is right up my alley. This line is so low. 209 passing yards in today's NFL is very low. Very low. You have to believe they're going to be down. 
uh, they're not going to run three yards in a cloud of dust with Ramon J. Stevenson to make up 17 points. So, I mean, and the other thing you have to think about with Brissett and this offense, I know it's a new uh, regime there, but I have a feeling we're going to see a very similar game plan. Those running backs out in the flat, they have Antonio Gibson there. We know he can catch the ball out of the backfield. I'm actually kind of interested in this Brissett number. If he's alive, come the third quarter. Well, That's the key. We'll, we'll get to this offensive line in a little bit. Here. Yeah. We'll, we'll I, speak on that. I love these really, really low totals. I mean, I, I, I mean, the, the difference, but that's 70 that's yards <laughs> between Stroud and Brissett. And I know nobody wants to believe in a Jacoby Brissett over, but uh, are you, uh, if you guys followed me last year, you know, I love backup quarterbacks coming in when there's no film on them. And that's the other thing. They don't know what the Patriots are going to run. This, these are wide receivers that we really haven't seen before. So it's gross. It's disgusting. Uh, it's really hard to hit submit on a Jacoby Brissett over. But in this game, Joe Burrow with the question marks at that wide receiving core, I would, I, I, I would play the Brissett over as opposed to the to the Burrow over in that game. Uh, no question. So, uh, Cardinals and Bills, Josh Allen and Kyler Murray. I think these uh, lines are pretty dialed in. Corbin, do you have any opinion on on that game, quarterback wise? I don't, as you say, I, I kind of looked at those numbers. I kind of feel they're in the right spots. But I'm just like, who's Josh Allen really going to throw to outside of Kincaid and Shakir? It's like, um, I just, I almost look at their receiving core and I'm like, how do they get to 200 and, what is yeah. it, 243? I'm like, how, do, but I wouldn't want to play an under on Josh Allen at the minute. So it's kind of one of those I'll wait and see for next week how it goes. So. Yeah, there's a lot of question marks with both those offenses. I, I want no part. Caleb Williams and Will Levis. I'm of the opinion that Will Levis is very overrated. I would be playing the under on this one. I think the Bears' defense is very good. Um, and I actually think the Bears maybe play with the lead a little bit and try and protect Caleb Williams. Exactly. I actually kind of like the unders on both these guys. Uh, Jim, what do you think? I would agree with you there, yeah. Yeah, I'm not uh, – I think they're going to protect Caleb. And, look, they didn't bring in who they brought in. To not run the ball. I mean, they're going to run the ball. That's what Chicago is going to do. They're going to let Caleb have his big explosive plays here and there. But if they get a lead on Tennessee, they're going to run. And, you know, I, I'm in the camp that I don't think this Tennessee Titans defense is that good. Uh, I think they're going to give up a lot of points. I also think they're going to give up a lot of time of possession. And isn't that just the Titans thing, too? Again, we I know we don't have the same coaching staff, but it seems like Titans games, they just bleed away clock. The whole game. <laughs> True. Feels like they play at like three quarters pace compared to everybody else. So, you know, with them running the ball and taking time off, I can most certainly see the unders on each of them here. It's going to take some big plays for these guys to get up and over that those numbers. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not impressed with the Titans uh, receiving core that they're bringing in. Uh, to the show. DeAndre Hopkins is already banged up. Uh, he's, he's on the injury report, and we're not even – we have they ha he hasn't played a second of actual football, and he's already on the injury report. So uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Just a little reminder, you do not have to play all of these. Uh, no. We will tell you if these are official plays that we bet with our own money. Um, our plays are available at Wager Talk. Those are our actual official – client plays we like to go through all of these and just talk about them but i uh, just want to make it very clear when we get to a play that we are playing with our actual money that's an official play we will tell you uh, if we don't say this is an official play this is not something uh, that is on our record or playing there and we just want to really really preach good bankroll management it's week one this is a very very long uh se season you do not have to uh <laughs> go all in on week one, uh, especially if you had a good or a bad day yesterday, let's protect the bankroll, practice good bankroll management. Uh, we've done a very good job. We're at 151 units for 2024. So uh, we look to continue that in the NFL season. Let's talk Jaguars and Dolphins. Kind of interesting that that Corbin, that Tua, I, I, I kind of compare some of these guys. Tua is less than Stroud. To me, that's interesting. Um, I I would I would want to play Tua at yeah. this number. Exact, exactly. It's almost that's where the hype from the off season comes in. Everyone's obviously talking about the Texans receiving court. Everyone's going and looking for Stroud numbers. Nobody's thinking of Tua and what they've got. I I like the number, but again, I it's kind of in that range that I don't want to play. I could see them getting up and running the ball with uh, a chain. I've got a same game parlay. I think on that game coming up. So, all right, uh, Steelers and Falcons. Uh, 
I don't know. I'm not a Kirk Cousins coming off of a major injury, you know, believer. And then you got the Steelers who I, I mean, <laughs> what is it about the Steelers? They're just they don't know who their quarterback is. They don't it's, know who anybody is. It's it's, it's like gonna... four hours before kickoff of week one, and they're like, I don't know who's playing quarterback. <laughs> you who do you know who's playing <laughs> quarterback? So the only uh, guy penciled does... in is TJ Watt. We know where TJ is going to line up. Other than that, it's all shell game with Tom this year. It's just uh, to me, I, to me, this is a big time stay away uh, from any quarterback props. Maybe even a lot of skill position. Uh, players uh panthers and saints again here we go it's gross it's disgusting jim it's under 200 yards what is the saint secondary the best secondary like in the nfl i don't think so no. uh, i i would take i would take bryce young if it's Ooh. if it's under there uh we're playing numbers here um i don't know Look, panthers and saints what do you think they're bad uh they're bad <laughs> Great analysis, Jim. However, however, (laughs) I don't think the Panthers can be as bad as they were last year. Like, there's going to be some kind of a tick up from Bryce Young. Either that or he's just not the guy. Uh, I'm not a Bryce Young believer, but I do think he has some talent. Um, So to set him at 200, look, they could be down. And we can see that as those Adam Thielen receptions in garbage time just tick this number up over 200. Uh, I don't think they're going to be running the ball on New Orleans by any means. If they're going to do anything, it's going to have to be through the air. Um, not interested in Derek Carr at all. Uh, I've kind of pegged Derek Carr unless I see something. It's just a guy I'm not going to bet on this year unless I really see a good trend. But to give me other – I mean, how else are the Panthers going to move the ball? They're going to have to throw it. They're just going to – Yeah, Deontay Johnson is healthy at least for now. I, starting <laughs> next week, he probably is not probably – He probably <laughs> – I've had that guy in fantasy football and it's infuriating. Like he's on the list of like, do not, if it was the last round at the last pick and he was still available, I'd be like, you know what? I've got better things to do than than, than deal with the odds. But for now he's healthy. So I love these low numbers on these quarterbacks that everyone thinks is bad. All the rules are in favor of offense. So um, here's another one. Uh, Corbin, Sam Darnold, only 227 and a half against the Giants, who are a yeah. bottom three secondary. Sign me up. 100%. Uh, this is one I can, this out of all the ones we've mentioned, this one is the closest I can get to actually playing. Um, I think Darnold's just again, it's a new player coming into a new situation. I think they're gonna air the ball out, give him some confidence. It's a great game to like settle him in. Mm-hmm. If you if you could pick any team to play on the board week one to settle in a new quarterback and build his confidence up, I think the Giants would be pretty high up that high up that list. The only question I have, or the only reason I haven't played it yet, is we'll get to it in my best bet. I almost would rather just go Justin Jefferson receiving. I feel like that's who he's gonna go to like a huge amount of, t- of the time if he if 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 jefferson doesn't go over i don't see Darnold then going over with the other options so yeah i just i i'm stunned when when i look at quarterback props i'm really looking to try to isolate some of the bad secondaries that's why cj stroud is there but again you give me sam Darnold 227 or cj stroud 277 i, I would have take Darnold. he doesn't have that shadow over him he doesn't have with mccarthy being out now he, he's the guy he knows it's starting job um his career has been very strange he's been underwhelming but he's also had some very weird coaching and offensive coordinator situations and i think this is his best chance to thrive and i think he gets a great match exactly. uh, here so uh broncos and seahawks um i don't know i, I broncos I, jim i believe in coaching and i believe that uh, Sean Payton really likes Bo Nix. Do I think he's going to let him air it out a lot? Probably not. But again, we're below 200, so it's got to have my attention here. Um, I just love the, love these low, low numbers. So that being said, I, I this Broncos wide receiving court is not explosive or exciting um, at all. I don't know. Bo Nix, Geno Smith, anything striking your fancy here? I think we're going to see a much improved uh, Seattle defense this year. Uh, with the head coaching agree. change, the scheme change, we're now going to a 3-4 system. 3-4 uh, systems in the NFL can really confuse rookie quarterbacks. It is a lot harder to know who's coming and who's dropping 
when you have four linebackers. Sometimes they're down, sometimes they're up. They stack them on the left, stack them on the right. So this is going to be different than everything that Bo Nix has seen. And it's still a rookie quarterback going into Seattle opening weekend. This is a real tough ask for Bo Nix. And all the hype around him, he has played well in the preseason, but we've seen seasoned quarterbacks have issues going into Seattle. Now, I do think they can keep this game close, but if they keep this game close, the running game is still going to be alive if we have a close game. So I actually see more work from the running backs in this game on both sides of the ball, more so than the quarterbacks. So I, I would lean under on both of these. Raiders and Chargers, uh, I want nothing to do with these guys. Way too many question marks, uh, Corbin. Is there much we can do with these guys? I really love Minshew, actually. Mm. Until until I see a change, I'm just going to keep fading the Chargers' pass defense. It mm. is, it's shocking. And may, maybe they get it together now, but I have to just keep playing it at this total. Again, I, it's the same point as I mentioned with Darnold. If you're, if you're going to bed Minshew in, the Chargers' defense is a huge opportunity to get him comfortable with the system build up his confidence and let him air it out it's such a low total you look they still have Devonte adams it, mm-hmm. like and he was unhappy last year but as a as an organization you're going to want to keep him happy so you're going to have to get him the ball him and jacoby myers they have a couple of good tight ends i i quite like Minshew. i've played it myself but quite small just because of some of the uncertainties so jacoby myers was a great prop player Last year. His his numbers were oh, so was. low because yeah. all the attention was on Adams. We were cashing on Jacoby Myers quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, Dak Prescott and Deshaun Watson. I want nothing to do with these two guys today. You've got home Dak versus away Dak, and they are two different people. And then you've got Deshaun Watson, which I, I have no idea what this Browns offense uh, is going to look like. So, Jim, this is a complete pass for me. Before we jump on this one, just a thought on that, that Raiders play. Let's not forget that. Uh, Joey Bosa is playing with a club. Oh, that's true. As well. So if you like, now all you have to worry about is Khalil Mack. Now he did get six sacks against this team last year in one game, but that's kind of an anomaly. Uh, going back to what Corbin was saying, I think that might actually lean us towards the Minshew over. He's going to have way less pressure than dealing with both these guys. As far as Prescott and, Washington, and, and Watson, I mean, these are two pretender quarterbacks, in my opinion. They both have big contracts that just they don't play up to when the when the moment counts. I don't know what we're going to get from this Browns team. We know the defense is going to be good. But if we see this Deshaun Watson we saw last year, oh, God, is it going to get ugly quick there. And they are going to run him out of town with pitchforks. It just <laughs> That's a lot of money to pay for mediocre to below you know, quarterback play. Uh, Prescott, again, it, these offenses are in flux a little bit. No Nick Chubb. The running game for Dallas, I don't know what we're going to see from. So I'm kind of out. I'm up taking a wait and see approach on the Browns and, and Dallas right now, and we'll see what they come up with. It's just uh, it, it's so funny with Dallas. Like, sorry, Corey, but I didn't mean to interrupt. Okay. Like last year in fantasy football drafts, like Tony Pollard, would be, like you wanted yeah. the number one running back in Dallas. Now, like <laughs> the, the, the running backs go to like round eight or nine or so. Nobody wants anything to do with this. Uh, this this Cowboys running game. So I guess they're thinking that Dak is going to throw the ball a lot. But on the road, uh, good Browns defense. I can't get to the window on that. What were you going to say, Corbin? Deshaun Watson interception. We haven't mentioned it, but he had four uh, interceptions in six games last year. And the only ones he didn't were against the Cardinals and the Titans, who have horrific de- uh, passing defenses. Cowboys are really good on defense at getting takeaways and interceptions and have quite a good actual passing defense. I, I think they could easily get one, if not two, from Deshaun Watson. At minus 130 seems like a pretty good price to me. So I like that, Corbin. It's a good call. Uh, Baker Mayfield and Jane, Jane Daniels, I like Baker Mayfield. I talked about it uh, on uh, – bet on it about how this over one and a half touchdowns. This is a Washington team that gave up uh, over one and a half touchdowns in 13 games last year. Baker, believe it or not, threw for one and a half touchdowns in 12 games last year. Um, he was kind of sneaky good. Evans is healthy. Godwin is, uh, you know, a year removed from his knee injury. Um, and Rashad White catches passes. I talked about how Rashad White ran for only six touchdowns, but he caught three. This is a team that doesn't just pound the ball in uh, once they get inside the 10. Um, great price on the touchdowns. Yards, I don't know if I can get there, but touchdowns on this one? Yeah, absolutely. Jane Daniels, I'm excited to watch him 
play. I'm actually excited that Washington is going to be uh, have a lot of fun. Uh, they could be the fun red zone team <laughs> this year where they just cut to Washington. Here's Jane Daniels running for 38 yards. Um, but I like Baker over over touchdowns. Uh, Jim, anything on these two quarterbacks? No, I got nothing to add there. I want to see what Daniels uh, – I know he's fast. I know he's mobile, but he's going to make those couple rookie mistakes. You know, with these rookie quarterbacks, they can be as great as they are advertised, but you will make your rookie mistakes. You have to pay your dues in this league. Peyton Manning did it. All the greats have done it when they've come in. Mahomes, he even still has his moments. So you got to pay your dues, and I think Daniels is in for a little bit of a rude awakening. Maybe not this week, but coming up soon, he's going to play some good defenses, and we're going to look to cash them. Uh, the night game, the Rams and the Lions, the over-under is 52. Corbin, I – my opinion, it's more skill position players that we're looking at props, but these quarterbacks, the books are expecting a complete shootout. Anything yeah. to do with the quarterbacks? No, I don't think so. I don't. Uh, no. All right. We'll get to the receivers. <laughs> it's, okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of interesting props uh, that we have this year. We're going to do the, at the end here, we're going to do co- the, the new category on DraftKings players to not score a touchdown. Yes. Corbin is so excited about it, and I am absolutely <laughs> terrified. So we'll talk about that. Um, but I, I want to do this every week. I want to do this. these players to throw one touchdown parlay. These were great last year, especially if you just took, like, the the bad quarterbacks because mm-hmm. b- most of them always, like, throw one touchdown. So let's just scroll down, Corbin. If you see one that you like to throw a touchdown, just say mm-hmm. yes. I'm guessing you want Stroud in there. Yes. All right. Yes. Um, <laughs> percent? No, no, I, 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 no I'll take that one on Joe Bay, though. No. You want you want Burrow? Yeah, yeah, of All course right. I do. Against this team, yeah. All right, <laughs> All right we'll throw Burrow in there. Uh, let's see, Josh Allen, Kyler Murray, any of the yes? I can't oh. get there on the pass. I, I I actually think the Cardinals can have a huge lot of success in this game. I just I I'll get to how I'm approaching that game, but yeah, not on the passing touchdown. All right, uh, Levis, Caleb. No, I'm not going there. Uh, I'm guessing you went Tua. Tua, yes. Oh yeah. We got yeah. We got to have Tua in there. Uh, Steelers, Falcons, no chance. Panthers, Saints, no. I'll take a Sam Donald. I will well, absolutely. He's got to go for at least I will one, right? Absolutely, yeah. take it, take it, Sam <laughs> Donald. Uh, Broncos, Seahawks, Raiders, Chargers, Cowboys, Browns. We go and we put in a Baker. Yes, absolutely. Baker's, Baker's got to get at least. So, I I was going to mention it, but this this is the ideal spot where Baker just cooks. Like we mm-hmm. we we homed in Healthy. on it really well last year, Andy. Yeah. In certain spots, you can you can make so much money on Baker against pa- poor pass defenses. Maybe not so much this week because the Commanders don't have a particularly good rush defense, but they were a good te- Baker was a good player to get on those kind of week by week basis. So, um, I mean Goff and Stafford. One of them. Golf. I, I could take golf. All I don't. Right. I can't see what golf. The All right. Is. So there, there's your. I, I don't know why it's not letting me. Why it's not showing the odds? That's like completely not health. That not not helpful. I'll try <laughs> and do it on my phone. But there, there's your, there's your week one uh, quarterbacks to throw <laughs> one touchdown. That's Stroud. <laughs> Lines are moving. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Stroud, everyone's betting the parlay as we're Burrow, uh, Tua, showing it off. Darnold, Baker, and Golf all to throw one touchdown. So we'll monitor uh, that and uh, we'll see how it goes. So, all right. Let's talk a little bit about the running backs here. And thanks everyone for joining us. If you haven't hit the like button, uh, that would really help us out. Uh, let's talk about uh, some of the rushing props, Texans and Colts. Um, I got nothing uh, for any of these guys. Uh, Jim, Corbin, any rushing props in the Texans Colts? Not for this uh, game. Uh, not interested in this game rushing wise, no. Patriots and Bengals, Jim, you were interested in a, in a, a Ramondre, uh, Ramondre Stevenson. You, you interested in receptions here? Or I was I was interested in his receptions number at three and a half, actually. Um, knowing that we think Brissett is going to be running for his life and trying to get the ball out fast. He's just proven time and time again he's captain checkdown in the receiving game. Now, they have Antonio Gibson there. We don't know if he's going to be taking some of these receptions away, but, I mean, it's not like Gibson was lighting the world on fire in Washington. Um, so I still think we're going to see Stevenson on third down. So, I mean, the four, what is that, 14 and a half? I – is that that? this 14. That's a half. great number. Yeah, great that's number. a good one. That's three receptions for this guy. So if you don't get the fourth, I think you still, he could get this in one screen pass. 
you know, one one play that we didn't play the other night that I was like, I was kicking myself was um, like Isaiah Pacheco. Mm. Like he just, if if you get this low number, he's out there like so many times that he's just going to get a dump off or yeah. two. And we saw him go, he, we saw him cashes over on one play. I love these numbers that are around the 14 and a half. Corbin, we, we, we did well. What was it? Was Mixon? We, we, we ran with Mixon. Mixon. Singletary, oh, Mixon. Singletary, yes. And that was another one, but I forgot who. I love these numbers here on these guys that are just, they're just going to be out there. And uh, I mean, you don't think Brissett's going to be checking the ball down? Uh, oh, that's why. I, I love Antonio Gibson. You just mentioned it. I don't know if you want me to hold off. Yeah, on go, that ahead. One no, go ahead. Go ahead. I think I you mentioned Brissett. He's just going to check it down, expecting them to be playing from behind. He gives them such a good option in the passing game, and mm-hmm. it's such a low total. So I, I was going over his stats from last year. Now, I, I am aware, before everyone jumps down my throat, that it is a different team. I am aware. But he went over in nine of the last ten, and I think he can have that same kind of effectiveness. What I really liked when I was looking over his stats is he had quite long receptions. So I... Honestly, we were talking about it. I think he could get this in maybe one, two receptions. Yeah. Like at 12 and a half, I, I think he's he's going to have good success at, with the Patriots. So, Love This it. is interesting. It both both running backs for the Patriots set that low. I, it's an yeah, interesting spot. But they, they easily could both hit. Like it's not like they have like this dynamic wide receiving core that's going to you know light the world on fire. So yeah. um, Can I go Car- next? Yeah, go ahead. Because I love this next play. This might be one of my favorite on the board. It's uh, James Connors at uh, Rush Yards. I played it at the start of the week. It was at 50 and a half. It's crept up a little. But I love this game. I mentioned that I expect the Cardinals to have good success here. And I, I think that all starts from the run game. And I think Connors going to have huge success. He went over in four of the last five when they put a good run towards the end of the year. He only didn't versus the Bill uh, versus the Bears, even and the Bears have great uh, run defense. The Bills are quite average versus the run, and I think this game will be closer. I've seen people thinking the Bills are going to win quite easily, but I think the Cardinals will at least keep it close, and they're at their best when they're running. So James Connors, the guy for me, and that's an official play for me. So. Nice. And I, I believe Matt Milano's out for the Bills as well. Oh, okay. I okay. believe so. To Cor- Corbin's point, that's their best linebacker. Uh, so works for that Connor play. I I think there's a chance that James Cook is awesome th- this this year. Um, I, he was infuriating at times with the coaching staff last year. Like we would have him. There was a couple times where we had him over on his rush attempts and. It'd be like second and one and they'd like throw a deep ball. Then it's mm-hmm. third and one and they'd do this ridiculous like slant and then they'd punt. It was like, why don't we <laughs> just give James Cook the ball? <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. Um, I love his talent. I think this is going to be a big year for him. We'll get to Dalton Kincaid as another guy. Uh, Titans and Bears. I want to be- I want to believe in the Bears running game. I'm just not I, – I don't know which running back. To take Jim, I like I, I, I is it Swift <laughs> that, that you go over? I mean, they have the yards would suggest he's the guy, but couldn't you see three running backs from the Bears all rushing for thirty-five yards? One hundred percent, exactly. One hundred percent. I would like the the Herbert twenty-seven and a half over the Swift forty-two and a half. I think Swift makes more of an impact in the passing game than Herbert will. Okay, so he's just so good in space. I, I can't see them not having a game plan this year with Swift to get him in space on screen passes or out of the backfield. And I think Herbert is going to take more of those in between the tackles uh, straight on runs than they are Swift. Yeah. And they got to keep him healthy. They want to keep Swift healthy. He had a pretty big workload, you know, last year with Philadelphia, he stayed healthy. That was a concern before that. Uh, I, I would try to protect him if it was me. Andy, I have a question for you. Um, so I've no, I mentioned I did not it. draft Tony Pollard in the name of my league like I did last year. Yeah, you love you love Tony Pollard. Um, no, it was actually just on your Bears bit. So obviously you like them to rush. So I mentioned it a couple of times, and I have one coming up. But uh, Bet Three Six Five and a couple of other books do team rushing. Mm. So you can get the Bears okay. team rushing yards at one twenty six and a half at the minute. That sounds it, about right. That's, that's pretty. You're gonna get some from Caleb too. So that's yeah. That, that pretty I, interesting. I, I I would I would love that prop as opposed to trying to pick which. That's why I was gonna say instead of you trying to pick out which one of these receivers, would you rather just clump it all together and just go for the 
Yeah. The team rush. Yeah, so. that's a that's a good one. I would like that. So whilst whilst we mentioned Tony Pollard, that is one that I was looking at. I just he's just not that good. Like he averages three or four yards a carry. He doesn't look that quick with a new team. The Bears had the best rush defense last year. Obviously, there's spears to take away his yards. I just <sighs> 44 and a half seems like a lot against one of the best rush defenses from last year for me. It's going to be interesting with Pollard because he, he has said he was not healthy last year. His leg wasn't fully healthy from the, it's good from excuses the break. now to make. <laughs> I, I mean, he definitely looked very slow last year compared to what he looked like the year before, but I will say the decision-making he made a lot of times was infuriating. One of my most popular tweets was I took, just I took run a, into the defender. I, I took a screenshot of Tony Pollard like wide open to the end zone. It was like somehow he didn't score here. He like cut it right back into a linebacker. Like you could have walked in there. And it was, I, I, I thought I was the only one getting killed in my fantasy <laughs> leagues from Pollard, but no, no, no. A lot of people were just like, yeah, this is awful. Um, so yeah, I just can't get there with Pollard. I'm too scarred from last year. Jaguars and Dolphins. I, I, I actually am a believer in this Jaguars offense. I kind of like ETN 58 and a half. I don't think tank Bigsby is that good. Um, I watched him really blow some plays last year and then not get much playing time. So ETN is a guy um, I don't like the rushing and receiving props, but ETN is a guy that I think is probably going to catch most of the passes coming out of there. Um, I, I don't know, Corbin, what do you do with most certain a chain? It's one of those where I think it's right. I think a chain is going to take over this year, but until I see it, I can't play it like that. Most art number is, is low. And like he's getting on there with age and he was so good with touchdowns last year. I'm just going to wait and see. I'd rather I have a chain on the alt line coming up. That's that's where I would go with this. So uh, Steelers and Falcons, Jim, anything you want? You want anything to do with the, any of these guys? Again, this game is just such a we don't know what we're going to get. It, it, Corbin's got to do the next Steelers uh, Falcons one here. <laughs> <laughs> See if he can find something, but I've got nothing, man. Uh, yeah, maybe Warren at 27 and a half. I know that Najee is the guy, but uh, they keep saying they're going to get more and more involved. And if they're down, it can't be Najee. Like if they're serious about winning the game, you have to have Warren in there because of the receiving threat that he is. So if the Steelers go down, this might actually be a really good live number that you could get on Warren. If you see the Steelers going mm. down early, and we know they're going to have to pass. I mean, we don't know what this Russell Wilson offense is going to be either. Is Russell going to hold on to the ball for 10 seconds? Just is Russell even going to play? Is he going to play? <laughs> I, we don't know. We don't know anything. So it's a just pass away. this game and watch and see. It's, it's, I was laughing with this game the other week. It's like Fryermuth, who was like a, a great darling. He's taking reps with the third team. <laughs> He's not even... Like what happened? I, I I, nothing know. makes sense. So move on. Uh, is it, 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 last thing on this game? Are we going to be kicking ourselves when we didn't take Kirk Cousins under three and a half coming off of major Ooh, major injury? Is Kirk Cousins really going to take off against the Steelers? I don't know. And you I mean, had to kneel down at the end too. Kneel downs at the end. Ooh. I can see Kirk Cousins like three rushes for minus three yards uh, because <laughs> of three kneel downs at the end of the first half. I don't know. Hard for me to believe Kirk Cousins is is going to run. Uh, Panthers and Saints. I actually think uh, Hubbard. It could be a sneaky play. The books are onto it. 56 and a half is a pretty big number. Uh, but other than that, uh, I mean, he's, he's the guy. But they, they, drafted the, they drafted the guy who's not even playing. Uh, he's, he's on the pup list. Uh, so I think Hubbard actually pretty good fantasy play for the first four weeks, maybe in this game, Corbin. Anything? I have nothing. Uh, Hubbard's the obvious one. But again, I think the number's in the right place. So Yeah. Uh, Vikings and Giants. Jim, anything? Any of these guys you like? Daniel Jones, 27 and a half. I know there's an injury. <laughs> I know he could hurt it again. But we've seen this over and over with this guy. If they hang it under 30, he just takes off and runs. He has to. This offensive line is garbage. He's going to run for his life all season and try to stay alive once again. So, uh, yeah, I'm not taking anybody else here except – that low number on Daniel Jones at 27 and a half. I could see it being four rushes for 35 yards. And the thing that we've seen with Jones is he still has speed that when he does run, they're usually 12, 13, 
20 yard clips. They're not those two yards and run out of bounds. He's taken off straight down the field. So you could get this in three, three rushes here. Yeah, it's a good point. Good point. Broncos and uh, yes, Corbin. before we move on, I just want to go over Ty Chandler, 27 and a half. This is one that I am leaning towards playing. So obviously we have Aaron Jones on the new team. He's so injury prone that I think they may look to ease him in. Chandler finished the year really strongly. He went over in six of their last eight concerns with Aaron Jones. And I just love this low total on a backup where I think, again, it could be it could be such a low scoring game, I think, between these two. I think they could try and see what they have with Chandler at various points here at that total. Broncos and Seahawks, Kenneth Walker, wow, 66 and a half. So they're expecting big, big things um, from them. Uh, Javante Williams at 52 and a half. Oh, that's an under. Yeah, uh, that's I, that's a that's a pretty clear under for me. Um, I would look at Jaleel uh, McLaughlin, not in his rushing, but in maybe his receptions or his passing pro- or uh, his receiving props. They seem to really like him. Um, I don't know, Jim, anything do you like the under on Javante? That just seems like a big number against a good defense. Uh, again, I expect I expect big improvements from the Seattle defense. So I would I would lean towards under pretty much across the board uh, as far as the Broncos go. That is a very, pretty low number on McLaughlin. I'm looking at the quarterbacks here a little bit. This 10 and a half for Geno Smith. That's not a lot of yards. And if we, Geno's one of the worst quarterbacks under pressure throwing wise. So really, if he's just willing to take off and run, he just has to be willing. And I think he gets over this 10 and a half. I expect Denver's pass rush to be improved. They have a couple good edge defenders and the Seattle offensive line, especially their tackle game has come into question a little bit here. So we can see Gino running for his life a little bit to start the season here. I did. I, I thought we were done with Alexander Madison. <laughs> no, he's back. Uh, the, the Raiders and the Chargers. Uh, to me, this backfield is the most, uh, I, don't, I don't want to say the most interesting, but I, I am very interested to see what they do with J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. I kind of like J.K. Dobbins, 35 and a half. We know he's not going to be healthy for the entire year, so why not play him when he is healthy? <laughs> because he's really good when he is healthy. I'm not going to get to the window on it, but that's how I would lean. Corbin, what do you think? Uh, I will just say that uh, Kenneth Walker is actually was one of my favorite plays uh, of the week. Um, I'm worried about him long term with the backfield split with Charbonnet, but I think he's good here for week one. Uh, Broncos had the third worst rush defense, gave up on average 137 yards. And these are the spots where Walker normally crushed it last year. But uh, I also really love his alt line of 50 yards. I think he hit it in a huge amount of games. So yeah, I'll look at that. Um, With regards to the next game that we were just talking about, Again, I was I spent a week deciding whether I wanted to play Gus Edwards, and it was at 43 and a half, and it's now moved to 45 and a half. So I'm probably just about going to stay off it. But I really like what I've read and I've heard coming out of like his camp and some of the interviews that he's done. But what worried me is the coach did a press conference. I think it was this week where he mentioned just going with whoever has the hot hand. So if he if he starts off slightly slow and JK comes in that has a good start, you could easily see them just moving all the share over to him. So yeah, I think I'm going to pass on that now. Of all the, that's got to be top three most of my most hated coach cliche. We're just going to go with the hot hand. We'll design yeah. some good runs, and then they're both going to have the hot hands. Yes. <laughs> uh, how good your offensive line? That, a lot of that depends on who's got the hot, the hot hand. I that. You're a head coach of an NFL, and you're just going to – whoever's got Throw the hot hand. to the wind. Nice okay. coaching. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like some of the bad quarter men we've seen in UFC, Jim. Yeah, just, <laughs> just hit them harder. Uh, Cowboys <laughs> – <laughs> uh, Cowboys and the Browns. Zeke under 31 and a half. Yes, please. Uh, I think it's interesting that Dowdle's a little bit ahead of, of Zeke. Uh, this is a really, really good uh was a really good defense. Um Jerome Ford under 50 and a half. He's not a bell cow running back. He catches passes out of the backfield. I don't know. It's unders or nothing in this one for me, Jim. What do you think? Uh, I would agree. Um I think that Dowell has a way better shot of getting over 30 than Ezekiel Elliott does more than what the books are respecting here. Um, You know, it is obviously juice to the over, so it's probably going to be trending that way, but uh, how many carries is he going to get? Like how many times are they going to be willing to watch him run into the line and get a yard 
<laughs> like, at what point are you just like, all right, Dow will get in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I think that's what we're going to see from Elliot. Um, just to go back, anybody interested in Justin Herbert under 12 and a half with plantar fasciitis? Oh, that's a great call. I forgot about that. Yeah, the plantar fasciitis. Yeah, I don't know. I, this Chargers team is just so many unknowns. Like, yeah. who's their wide receiver? Is it, uh, with Josh Palmer is now on the injury mm-hmm. report. So, I, I, by hook or by crook, they all may have to run because I don't know who they're going to be <laughs> throwing to. So, uh, Commanders and Buccaneers, Corbin, anything you like in this one? Rushing wide. Yeah. I posted this play in the Discord uh, yesterday, but the Commanders under 118 uh, and a half rush team yards uh, just mentioned a few books, including uh, Bet365, have this. So the Bucks have the fourth worst uh, versus the pass and the fifth, sorry, fourth, I can't speak, fourth best pass defense and a rubbish, I can't speak. I've lost it. I know what you're saying. <laughs> we get where you're, yes. going. We get where you're <laughs> going with it. Take the under. Uh, yeah. The yeah. Under the ball. A ton. I get it. Um, I like yeah. that Jaden Daniels over 40 and a half. What I think he's going to run a lot this first game. Okay. I would I would also say Jaden Daniels to throw an interception uh, is a play worthy of, you know, uh, in, in every game. Yep. Um, Rams and Lions here. I think all the numbers are pretty dialed in. Uh, I, I, I don't find any value in any of these. You guys find anything? No, running backs in this game. No, I was considering a Kyron Williams under. I find it very interesting how he's going to be returning punts now I mm-hmm. and being on special teams. That just that just doesn't sit well with me having your RB1 doing that. But And we know the Lions had a good uh, rush defense, and we know that we're expecting probably a shootout here. Is he really going to be running that much? So that's the one I would lean. All I right. think LA might have to... Uh, if LA doesn't stick to the run somewhat, that could be a real recipe for disaster for them in that game. I'm really curious to see how they manage manage this uh, this team going forward. All right, we're going to go through the reception yards, and we'll get to some uh, touchdown scores, and we'll talk about the offensive, defensive lines. We'll do a same game parlay, best bets, all lines as well. Texans and Colts, uh, I do like Pittman, uh, 74 and a half downs, all like hurt uh, to me that kind of came out of nowhere i didn't know he was uh he was a favorite target of richardson in preseason but now he's out i think Pittman is you know we talk about bell cow running backs Pittman's going to be the bell cow wide receiver um uh, for this team but these texans i don't know corbin it's tough to pick an actual yeah receiver I, I, for houston isn't it yeah i don't think you can pick just one i think you've got to just go for stroud and just hope for the best quite honestly you you can't pick and choose here because we know what Diggs is like if he doesn't get the receptions and then dell's gonna feel left out and then collins is gonna feel left out and it's just gonna be like which one are they going to quite honestly so yeah i got nothing for receivers here uh patriots and Bengals. Uh, even though I like Jacoby Brissett to go over his 200, that means what some of these wide receivers got to go. Or I don't know, Jalen Polk, 29 and a half, Jim. Again, it's just we're playing the number here. That's really low. It's really low. <laughs> it's really low. And it's still, you still have doubt whether to play it. I mean, <laughs> true. At, all these numbers are in the cellar, right? They're way low. <laughs> um, I just don't know what in the world to do with them. I, I, I don't see the production. Um, you could say Hunter Henry, you know, is Jacoby going to look for that, that tight end little safety, safety outlet there. So that interests me in this game. Uh, I don't think that Cincinnati's going to have to throw the ball all over the field. So that makes me out on the Cincinnati receivers. Um, I'm still looking at these two running backs. Uh, it, it, I think, you know, me being on Stevenson and Corbin being on Gibson, I'm still looking at those two. I think, I think over on those two is, is the way to go. Chase Brown over 14 and a half has my attention. Zach Moss is not a you know big time receiver. They're going to bring in uh, Chase Brown on some third downs and such. I could see him kind of sneakily getting over there, three catches, 20 yards, uh, something like that. Uh, Cardinals and Bills, uh, Corbin, this is an interesting game. You like anything here? No, quite honestly. <laughs> Just- you, you, were, you were on Trey McBride a lot last year. I was, but then uh, obviously the Cardinals have got Harrison now, so I don't know if that's going to affect how often he's going to. Because McBride was really the only one that was catching any kind of pass for the most True. part. Is that how much of that like attention is going to go elsewhere? I just, 
I can't really go anywhere. That's why I, I'm just going to sit with the James Conner rushing. I can't get there with any receiving. So uh, that, I, that knocks 14 and a half is criminally low, though. I know he hasn't had a lot of targets, but with Diggs mm. being out of this offense, he could get that one catch. Oh, that's true. One. Yeah, they're going to be talking need... one play. That's true. That's true. It's a, it's a lot of with Gabe Davis and uh, and Diggs out. Somebody's going to have to to jump in. Mm-hmm. Titans and Bears. Uh, this is a gigantic yuck. Uh, any of you have the onions to play any receiver props in Titans Bears? No, sir. DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins is the only is the only one I can get there. The injury concerns are the ones that I was looking at. But over what is it now? Forty four and a half. He has a good yeah. reception with Levis. I'm expecting Levis to air it out considering that i think the running backs are not great he went over in six of eight games with levis cleared it in the last two games of the season the bears have a good run defense so i'm expecting them to pass they didn't have a particularly good uh pass defense so if levis is throwing i feel like it's going to have to go to deandre hopkins and that seems like a okay number to me so all right all right i, I won't be playing any of these uh, jaguars <laughs> and dolphins here's here's a Here's a good fantasy football and uh, props galore uh, type of game, uh, especially with receiving. So, Corbin, any of these numbers you think good enough to play? Tyreek is already 96 and a half. No. That's amazing. That, that's why I, uh, we'll get to it. The same game parlay is me targeting the wide receivers pretty much here. I I don't we'll know what uh, Waddle's yeah. longest reception is. That served me well last year. I just – it's one of those you could probably play him and Tyreek Hill just blindly every week and you'll come up profitable by the end of the year. It worked last year. Tua just airs it out. Jags don't have a particularly good pass defense. So 23 and a half is uh, perfect in the range. And <laughs> yeah. what all, anything under 24, 25 is, is go time. So, um, all right, let's move on to the uh, Steelers and the Falcons. Um, is it what? What is this uh, year? Seventeen of this is Kyle Pitts' uh, year. It's this year, Andy. It's, it's this year. Be, it's Come gonna on. be this year. It's his best uh, shot. It's his best shot yet. You it gotta is give true. it. You gotta say that. It is true. It is his mm-hmm. best one. Uh, how about this under on Pat Fryermuth? <laughs> uh, you don't. You don't know what you're gonna get. I'm a I, huge yeah, Fryermuth guy, but I I can't get over the fact that they're running him with third team and. Who's the quarterback? It is, is it a smoke screen though? Does he come out? It's it's he... right in that number with Fryermuth, uh, where you're. I don't think your return. Uh, if it was low twenties, I'd be much more interested. But when you start creeping up around thirty, the ineptitude of this passing game, which it was last year with Pickett um, and what Mason Rudolph, uh, I don't know if we're going to get a huge improvement. I, I expect uh, Justin Fields to play at some point this year. I think it's, it's going to be a win one. Today. It's going to be this it's very I, I mean, is it confirmed yet? Do we even know? I, I don't, I, right? No, it's looking more I, and more likely, I think, when I was reading about it. So I, it's, it, there's just, it, when, when, when you're betting, we just hate these question marks. And so that's why it's just it's to stay just away. To stay away. Yeah. I'm I will, actually, I, I'd be interested in Pickens, honestly. Uh, I know he's a head case, but that, again, that's one play. No, thank you. He's going to do one play for 50 yards. Yeah. Well, yeah. well then, well, then, he's, forth, well, then he's going know? under if he's only oh, yeah, one more catch yeah. 50 yeah. yards, then he's not he's, getting to 54 and a half. Then he's the can. garbage time king. Five <laughs> minutes left, all of a sudden he gets two catches for 20 yards. I will um, say, uh, before we move on, uh, we haven't really mentioned it, but Bijan Robinson, 20, it, it's gone up slightly. I I liked it more when it was 25 and a half. Now that 27 and a half does seem a tad steep, but surely they're going to get him the ball ball. Like, surely they have to. And it, Do they? <laughs> I feel like they have to, really, I, I, to I have would agree success. with you, but... I, w- I will say he's gone over this total in every game he's had four or more receptions last year. So if they are, I feel like they're going to have to get him the ball more, in, particularly in the passing game. So... It's a tough defense, but he is good. It's just you know, new new quarterback, new coaching staff, uh, yeah. just uh, all that. It's uh, an ugly game. Yeah, it really is. Uh, Panthers and Saints. Um, speaking of ugly games, speaking yep, of ugly I'm games, out. Uh, I got Rashid, nothing here. Rashid Shahid, his longest reception was a good one because he's kind of like Pickens, where he has like one yeah. catch for thirty. It's at 18, 18 and a half yards. I already looked it up. 
Okay, so, so you're with me okay. uh, on, yeah. on that one. Um, we had great success, to, particularly the second half of the year last year with Shahid's longest. So It was great. It was great. He, one target, one catch, 33 yards, and touchdown. Perfect. It was perfect, yeah. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, have, I have nothing else uh, in this one. It's a, Next. kind of a wasteland. Uh, Vikings and Giants, Corbin. Well, we'll save Justin Jefferson um, yeah. for a little bit later. Uh I don't know, Devin Singletary, 11 and a half, Jim, that kind of feels a little low, right? That's one That's one screen. I think all of these running back numbers are low this week. Like, okay. I, I, I'm looking at the receiver props, and I keep coming back to the running backs, and, and there are a lot of them. Look, Aaron Jones, 14 and a half. It's that's, criminally low. It's, it's criminally low, right? It makes no sense. It's two dump-off passes. Um, yeah. Same thing with Singletary. If he catches three passes, don't you think it's for 11 and a half yards? I love these. You're I not love, asking a lot. I love these mid to low teens numbers on yeah. these running backs. I think they're they're five to seven yards lower than they should be across yeah. the board. Across yeah. the board. I have I, I have a player I want to mention in that game. It's a uh, Darius Slayton over twenty two and a half. Um, he cleared this emphatically in his last four games of last season with 63, 90, 106, and sixty two, and. You're telling me the number is now 22? Like, who, who, who is he? Who's Jones going to be throwing to? I feel like Slayton's one of those guys again that can have one deep catch, and that's such a low total. I really like that play, quite honestly. I think that's uh, under the radar pick. So, was Devito oh, throwing him the ball? I don't care who yeah. was throwing him the ball. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a hitter. Uh, Broncos and Seahawks. Uh, boy, the books have already made the adjustment. I was hoping to get a good number on Jackson Smith and Jigba, but, um, yeah, they've sucked all the value out of that mm-hmm. one. Um, yeah, uh, DK Metcalf is, uh, 61 and a half. I don't know. Tyler Lockett, he's the, he just like steady, steady, but I can't, they're, they've got these numbers dialed in. I can't really find any, uh, value in this game. Do you like anything, Jim? Revenge spot for Noah Fant, but I don't like the number. The old so, revenge spot for Noah Fan. Classic. That's about, that's that's all I came to on this whole game. Was I get it. Revenge spot there. Uh, Corbin Jacoby Myers, thirty nine and a half. Yes, please. I, oh, I, it, I, it's so tempting, but again, it's like one of those you 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 don't quite know what's going to happen. I like that's why I like the Minshew passing over, trying to work out where it's going to go. As I said, like the the Adams at what is it sixty seven and a half? If you told me like a year ago I could get Devonte Adams at that kind of number, it's like. And as I said, I feel like like he had such a bad year last year. You see the clips where he comes off to the sideline. He's like, "I'm risking my health for this, and we're going nowhere." And it's like, you have to feel at some point they're going to have to try and make him happy to a degree here, and it's such a low total. I like Minshew. Chargers pass defense was awful last year. It's kind of one of those, would I rather pick a receiver or just go with Minshew? And I, I think the answer is Minshew at the minute. So, um, You want to you talk about Brock Bowers for this or you want me to – I got a little angle here on the tight ends. All right, go ahead. Michael Mayer, 16 and a half. Why is Brock Bowers at 33 and a half when he's already somewhat injured? <laughs> Thinking that yeah, Bowers man. is going to take away snaps from Myers means that you didn't watch the tape. They're not going to line up Bowers traditionally as a tight end. I think you're actually going to see both of these guys on the field, and you're going to see Mayer run the more traditional tight end routes. So hmm. 16 and a half looks pretty low. That could be two reception. It's a question of the volume is going to go his way. And no bet for me officially, but I thought it was real interesting that they lined these two numbers when I looked at them yesterday. You know me, we did a, I did a full video on Brock Bowers under four and a half touchdowns for the season. Um, yeah, the rookie tight ends, man, they're just, it's not a great track record of, of big seasons. So, uh, Cowboys and Browns, uh, Corbin, Brandon Cooks, we were playing unders when he was hurt last year, but I got to tell you, yeah. he, he started to get healthy and then all of a sudden he started going overs. I mean, you're not going to get, a. I mean, CD Lambs, this is going to be the lowest probably all year at 80 and a half. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of like looking sometimes at the secondary, uh, you know, receivers. So Brandon cooks 38 and a half. I probably, I'm not probably, I'm not going to play it just because <laughs> they're on the road at the Browns. Yeah. That would be where I would be looking at in this one. Anything else jump off the page to you? Not really. Ezekiel Elliott under seven and a half. I don't, I don't see him particularly getting involved in the past game, but it's one of those, the total is so low that you can yeah. just get there in one or two, but 
yeah, I can't really get there with anything. I kind of like Jerome Ford. He is he's a good pass catching uh, running back. Like even when the Browns' backfield is one hundred percent healthy, he does get catches um, with no. I mean, he's going to be on the field a, a decent amount. So again, one of these running backs, it's going to be on the field. He's going to get the opportunity. Fourteen and a half um, seems a little low. Uh, Commanders and the uh, Buccaneers. I kind of think this Mike Evans number is a touch low. Like CD Lamb's 80, you know, Jefferson's 81, but Mike Evans is 69 and a half. Uh, chalky. You don't need me to tell you that Mike Evans is <laughs> probably going to have a good game, but against this secondary, Mike Evans healthy. Uh, I really, really like this one. And also Rashad White, 20 and a half. I mean, he's a great um, catcher out of the backfield and Bucks love dumping it off to him. Corbin, you like anything else? Uh, you kind of nailed it. Mike Evans is the obvious choice, but it's one of those. I think I'm just gonna. I would rather just stick with the Baker, Baker kind yeah. of aspects and trying to pick what's gonna happen with those. So, uh, McLaurin, sixty-one and a half. Jim McLaurin, I, I it, 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 it could be almost all there in one play. Yeah, yeah. McLaurin and, is. I, I think I, when I was looking at stats, it was like this guy either goes under forty yards or over hundred. Yes, like he exactly. very rarely is. In this <laughs> so he's going to obliterate this number, or he's going to break your heart. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, okay. Yeah, I, uh, I want to wait and see approach uh, as far as the receiver numbers with Daniels. See if he has a favorite target. Uh, Can I go next? Because this is yeah. This next play is one of my favorite on the board. It very, very nearly made my best bet. And it's Cooper Cup. It's uh, yeah. I mentioned it before. The Lions have a good rush defense, so I'm expecting the Rams to throw it. I'm expecting that shootout potential. I think this is a huge comeback year for Cooper Cup. He looks way fitter. He looks way stronger. I think this may be the lowest total we see on Cup for the whole season. I think Nakua is going to have some regression. The interesting thing that I was trying to work out when I was looking into this, I don't know if uh, we, we talk about it in most weeks, but yards or receptions with Cooper Cup, because he gets so many of those kind of like short ones just to get him involved. Yeah. And four of the last, he went over this total in four of the last five games where he had six plus receptions. It's kind of like, I don't know what his reception line is at the minute. I forgot what it was, but it's kind of one of those, I, I feel like I could play it either way, quite honestly. And I feel like you're, you're you're about to get to it, but there's a huge same game parlay potential. This if you can a, get Armand Ross St. Game Brown at home, heaven, heaven, works yeah. every time. Ultimate uh, yeah. same game parlay. I, 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 I'm sorry, I interrupted you, Corbin, but I'm just it's okay. so excited about. You're it. so excited. <laughs> you can do a Monro St. Brown 50 and 50. 50, 50, and then you can just add a bunch of these in. Uh, this is like I love these Rams. Uh, I love the Rams wide receivers because, I mean, they're. They're the only two guys. <laughs> These are there's, there's not a whole lot of options uh, on there. So uh, I'm I, the same. I I got so excited about the same game parlor. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Absolutely. So, all right. So those are your skill position. Uh, let's talk about this new. Yes. Quick. So this is uh, right up. All right. Where it's, is it? Uh, it's in touchdowns. Uh, all right, right. So yeah. And then right touchdowns. at the end. They so, hit it all the way at the back of the website for everybody. Yeah, it's really sneaky. weird. Uh, so you guys know uh, I love playing these things. Uh, hockey, we had a massive hockey year simply by playing players to not have a point. All right, so now they have players to not score a touchdown, and Corbin is in love uh, with this category. <laughs> so who did you have circled as to not score a touchdown? This, this so, category. So, so one's obviously already happened. It was Romeo Dobbs. I had him because <laughs> – Okay. We have so many wide receiver options that Dobbs just gets lost and not a fan of him. But the two that I have circled at the minute are Kyle Pitts. I think I forgot one of them, I think, is in the minus 400 range, but I just I don't see either of these catching uh, catching oh, it. We might, the, we might be getting a, a news out of uh, with the Steelers because that game appears to be off the board here. Who was the other one? Uh, so uh, it was Pitts and Kill, Kill for the 49ers. Oh, Kittle. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, Jim, you have thoughts on Kittle to not. Yeah, look, I've been a Jets fan a long time, and it doesn't matter <laughs> what defensive coordinator we have or scheme, we can't cover a tight end to save our lives. I don't know what it is. And we have a great cover linebacker. We just get burnt. I'd be a little worried about Kittle. Uh, we have fantastic cornerbacks, so I think that they're going to go to the middle of the field, and that's where the tight ends kind of tend to eat, and then especially in that offense. Um yeah, I don't think it's going to be on the outsides with Ayuk and 
and uh, and Debo running, you know, flag routes, they're going to be coming across the middle. And it, I just, I've seen us get burnt many times by tight ends. I, I had to endure Rob Gronkowski with the Patriots. Just <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can't miss him. He's six foot eight. He's right there. Just cover him. <laughs> I'll throw out uh, Charbonnet with a healthy Kenneth Walker um, at this point. Um, I will. I'll absolutely throw out Miles Sanders. Yes. Uh, yeah. There's a good one. <laughs> they'll absolutely uh, play that one. Um, and then I don't know. It's Titans and Bears. Give me. Give me a. Give me a Titan to not score. I just, you know, I, we just got done talking about how bad Pollard was around the goal line. Do you think he's improved enough to no. uh, score against the Bears? I would say no. So, all right, players. I love. Not, I love this score. market. I feel like. I feel like. As the weeks go on, this is something that we can fine tune and find some real value in. Maybe not week one, but I feel like as as we go on, we'll be able to start getting some value on some people. So, all right, love it, great stuff. Uh, all right, guys, getting here towards our best bets here. So, uh, Corbin, let's start with uh, your alternate universe here. Uh, yes. Corbin is Corbin is fantastic at this, finding value mm-hmm. in these alt lines. Um, they're not necessarily teasers, but uh, walk us through who you found here in uh, in week one here. Yeah, so basically what I like to do with uh, the alternate universe and all these alt plays is I like to find teams that I think are going to win and then then them then just to cover basically or just bringing it bringing it down slightly so i don't like teasers that give you a certain number i like them perfectly where they are normally at seven and a half like kind of those key kind of point areas so uh the first one is bengals minus one i think we all think the patriots are going to be really terrible this year i don't care if chase is out there or not quite honestly and their biggest strength was the defense last year. But obviously, with no Belichick, there's no guarantee that their defense is suddenly going to be just as good. I, th- I I see regression coming in. The only only slight worry, obviously, is the new coaches, maybe some surprise factors. But I think I think Chase plays, and I think they have a field day, quite honestly. Uh, obviously, Bengals at home as well, huge advantage. So bring that down to minus one. They basically just have to win. Um Texans plus seven and a half. I love the Texans this year. I, I've mentioned it so much. I think they win this game. They won the second meeting by four last year. The Colts are a different team with Richardson, but again, he's been out for a while. It might might be some rust, might take him some time to adapt. I think there could be some teething problems. The Texans are hugely improved in offense and with defense as well. The, the defense uh, changes are going underlooked. I think it's a lot. Uh, lots the uh, the Texans also had lots of one score games last year. If they lose, I can't I can't see the Colts winning by more than one score. So that's the thinking behind that. And then the Dolphins plus seven and a half. This is probably my favorite piece. I have this personally with quite a few things. Miami just so good at home. They lost by one to the Titans in that shock uh, shock defeat. They lost to, uh, by seven to the Bills in the last game of the season, and that's it. I just think they have so much offense. I think the improvements are good. I don't. I. I also just don't rate the Jaguars. I think they are way overvalued every time, and there is no way in my mind the Dolphins are going to lose by more than one score week one at home to this Jags team. So wrap that all together, and I think you get minus one thirty two if I remember. Yeah, and this is uh, this is an official client play. It's available on Wager Talk. You can get all of our official plays uh, that we give out to clients and all access. It's available and it includes all plays all throughout today, also for tomorrow's game. It's got some futures in there as well, so you can grab that wt.buzz slash al. We're up 151 units, all sports this year. Uh, it's just, good. I mean, since it's crushing June, it. Yeah, talked about the dog days of summer and 108 units since uh, June 1st. So uh, we're looking very, very good in that. So grab that pack up at Wager Talk. Uh, This is a new segment. Jim, let's do Inside the Trenches. Uh, This is where you talk about the offensive, defensive lines. I feel like there's not a lot of content out there. And this is where where the action happens. So uh, introduce us to the segment, and let's just focus on three teams here. So what we're going to do each week is is we're going to take a look at two to three teams and just do a write up. Obviously throughout the uh throughout the year injuries are going to happen. Some of these offensive lines are going to just be absolutely ransacked <laughs> by week yeah. 8. We saw it last year. We made a killing off of uh the Giants offensive line last year when they just got destroyed. And I'm going to start with the Giants again this year. They are not improved at all. 
at all. It is the same unit, except they're already injured. <laughs> they're already beat up. Evan Neal now isn't even a starter. So the guy you were leaning on to be your anchor is not going to be a starter. He's going to be a backup. They have old John Runyon there. He's not impressive. Andrew Thomas, is he going to stay healthy? I just think this offensive line is so beat up. Greg Van Rotten is a backup offensive lineman. He's a starter. They're just not good. They're not an NFL offensive line. And with Daniel Jones running for his life back there, I think we're going to make a ton of money. They are improved on the defensive line, but we don't know how that's going to hold up with that bad secondary. So I know this is why we want to do this segment because – we have a great defensive line put together in New York, but a absolutely garbage secondary. So as far as sack props goes, defensive props, it's going to be a little iffy at first with the Giants. Then moving on to the Patriots, I think this is the worst offensive line, even worse than the Giants. They are beat up so bad coming out of training camp. It is ridiculous. We're talking third string and fourth string players that are actually playing. If they get an injury, they will be looking to play a player that was sitting on his couch a week ago. Okay. They're beat up on the inside. They don't have depth. David Andrews is the only rock solid piece on this offensive line right in the center. And that doesn't help you with pass rushers anymore. You got to have good tackles. Uh, Defensively, they lose Matt Judon. So they don't, they lose their all-star rusher. I don't know what we're going to get out of this defense. So I think the Patriots are a sell, man. Uh, their their offensive line is going to be bad. And if there's an injury live in game, uh, you want to watch for that because it could throw the whole game plan out the window. Now, let's go to the Lions, who I believe have the best offensive line in the league. They've shown it year in, year out. You want to take players to not have sacks against these guys. Penny Sewell is rock solid. He is just a monster. They are depth. They have depth across the line. Goff is able to stay upright and just pick people apart. So really, when it comes to the Lions, I think you have to look at unders on defensive stats. These guys are road graders. They will make a hole. And we've seen both of those running backs just have field days behind them. So that's our three offensive lines to talk about to start the year. And we'll see what kind of injuries have and stay up on this because it really is going to affect the rest of the player props throughout the league. Great stuff. So we're looking at guys to not have sacks against uh, the Lions and then guys to have sacks against the Patriots and the Giants uh, to start off the year. So good stuff. It's really, really important to know who's got really good uh, offense and defensive lines. It really, really makes a difference. So, uh, All right. Uh, let's do a same game parlay here, Corbin. Yes. Um, uh, I, you, you, you chose this game. I man. 1A, 1B oh. with that Rams and the I could, <laughs> Lions. I, I, like... I, I could have a play in each of them, quite honestly, <laughs> just like you showed. But yeah. this this is such an old, trusted, tried and tested method, this one. So, obviously, we have Tyreek Hill, 60-plus receiving yards and 5-plus receptions. He hit him 13 games last year. I don't need to sell any of you guys on Tyreek Hill. It's just <laughs> speed. I'm not sure who's going to guard him. He's fit and healthy. He's probably going to go after the receiving record again this year. And the Jags have a really, really bad passing defense. So I don't I don't need to talk about that one anymore. But Evan Ingram, three plus receptions. This is the this is the sneaky one for me. I really love this. We know he has such a good relationship with uh, Trevor Lawrence. He hit it in every single game last year, and he had actually had four four minimum every single game. Uh, expect them to be playing from behind or at least a shootout. I don't see a world where they're ahead. I think they're just going to go to Evan Ingram, quite honestly. And then uh, eight chain twenty. Uh, 25 plus alt, res- r- alt rushing yards so the games he actually played so i'm not counting the two where he only had like one or two rushing yards he hit it in every game except one and the one he didn't he got 24 we talked about uh raheem mosar aging i think they're going to be playing from ahead he has so much speed that he's so good that he could get this in two or three carries at times particularly at the end of the game when they're selling out trying to uh, run the ball more and kill the clock so I'm going to wrap all, uh, all four of those pieces up for minus 145. So. That Evan Ingram was just gold 
every Love it. single game Evan Ingram would, would, would catch those. It was just such an under. I think friend of a year of that. Parlay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, all right. So, uh, we, we joking, we have our departments. Corbin is head, <laughs> head of the tennis department. Uh, I'm head of the golf department. Uh, Jim is head of the sack uh, department. <laughs> so, uh, we talked about some offensive lines. So now let's talk about some actual defensive uh, play. So uh, Jim, walk us through these two guys. So like I said earlier, uh, Boye Mafe on Seattle came out of nowhere last year. About couple weeks into the season, I think it was about six weeks in, this guy went on a heck of a run. I think he went six weeks in a row with a sack, and they were lining him at under half a sack, which he is right now. I expect a big improvement from this defense with a different scheme. He's going to be playing rush linebacker, stand-up linebacker, which means now we can move him all over the place. He's not. He's going to have those two steps before the offensive tackle – gets his hands on him. And I think this kid athletically is super gifted. He most certainly is their premier pass rusher. The D's coordinator is going to try to get him in situations. He's the guy. Um, so to get plus money on a half a sack, I will gladly take it. They're going up against a rookie quarterback who's going to scramble, who's not going to realize the speed of the NFL. This is still different than preseason. You know, guys aren't running as hard in preseason as they are week one. And all of a sudden these – defenders are going to catch up quicker. So I can see Mafe chasing him down and getting him behind the line. Next one, here's Daniel Hunter. We Look, we all love the Texans. And everybody's talking about the offense on the Texans. It, I think this is becoming, as we get closer to the season, one of the most underrated signings in free agency. I mean, you had a guy with 16 and a half sacks last season on a defense who had nobody and no help. And now you're going to drop him opposite Will Anderson on a team that's going to be playing with a lead, who's going to have a quarterback with a good Achilles and going to be able to run an offense. Like all the stars are lining up for Daniil Hunter to have a really, really big year. I was pretty shocked to see this at under a half a sack and not a full sack to start the season. I think he could get one Richardson with his mobility. He's going to extend plays and give Hunter a chance to get there. Hunter and Will Anderson are going to benefit huge from having somebody on the opposite side of that line to play with this year. So two plays that I think we can get on, on week one, not official plays going out to clients, but ones I like. All right. Great work from the sack department. We're going to get to our best bets. Um, so uh, let's do some, uh, we didn't talk about this. I forgot to add it. Uh, you would do survivor picks guys. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, so post in the comments who you guys like uh, in your survivor pool. I'm guessing it's going to be a lot of Bengals, uh, but I'm interested who you guys have. A um, lot of ways to attack this week, but I got to tell you, the spreads are so weird because there's not too many big ones. A lot of these spreads are like field goals and such. So, uh, Jim, I'll let you go first. Who you want? So we're doing spreads, right? Not just money lines? Nope, just money lines. So oh, just your, money lines. Just okay, your good. basic survivor. <laughs> I feel like we're all going to end up with the same pick here. <laughs> I'm going to take the Vikings to start off. I'm going to oh, use up the Vikings. Oh, I like it. All mm. right. Vikings. That's all a right. good shout. You guys can have fun for the rest of the season. I'll be out next week. Just last year. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the obvious. I'm taking the Bengals. Uh, taking the Bengals. All right. Okay. Um, I will... Man, it was a team that I think stinks. I, I, I'm, I'm with you, Jim, that uh, the Vikings are pretty good. Um, you know who I don't think is very good right now is uh, I don't think the Cardinals are very good. So I'll take the Bills uh, to start off with. So uh, so there we go. There's our first survivor picks. Uh, this, this could absolutely be one of us doing it next week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So, this week yes. for Corbin's survivor pick, <laughs> only one. Left. Who do you have, Corbin? This quickly could be a 10 second segment next week. So, uh, all right, we're going to get to our best bets here. If you have not liked and subscribed to the channel, do that. And don't forget, all of our official plays are up at Wager Talk. You can get all of NFL week one plays that include Sunday night, Monday night football, wt.buzz slash al. No reason to not jump up more. We had a big, big night in MMA. Uh, last night, and we're up 151 units for the year. Uh, very consistently building bank rolls um, for everybody. So, all right, I'll go first. My best bet for this week is Baker Mayfield over one and a half touchdown passes. I've talked about this one all week. It is my favorite play. This is a Washington secondary that got absolutely torched last year, and they have not made any improvements. Um, I'm I'm really focusing on baiting some of these bad secondaries. The Giants, the Commanders, 
and the Colts. These are all secondaries that can easily uh, be exploited. Baker was sneaky good, did this in 12 games last year, and this is a Washington team that <laughs> allowed over one and a half touchdowns in 13 games. This could absolutely be a shootout. Baker's got all of his weapons that are healthy, a healthy Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Rashad White. And don't forget, Rashad White caught three touchdown passes, only rushed for six. This isn't a team that blasts the, the ball. This isn't like the Ravens with Derrick Henry trying to blast the ball uh, into the end zone. Um, this is a team that throws it a lot. So Baker Mayfield over one and a half touchdown passes is my best bet. Jim, going with the sack prop. Who you like? Christian Wilkins on the Raiders. So just got announced, I believe, yesterday. Malcolm Kuntz is on IR. So now we have Max Crosby and Christian Wilkins. And that's it. <laughs> that's <laughs> all we got. Okay, so that's what the Raiders are going to have to go with here. This guy has been at the facility before everybody else the entire offseason with Crosby. They have worked hand-in-hand -hand together. Crosby knows he needs this guy to have a year. He cannot be taking on double teams every single play. They're going up against the Chargers with Justin Herbert, who has had plantar fasciitis. I have had plantar fasciitis. It does not get better in three weeks, just like they said. It lingers all year. <laughs> so I don't believe that we're going to see a fully mobile Herbert here. Uh, I think the Raiders are coming into this a little underrated. I know the hype with Harbaugh. This is a great number, plus 185 to get a half a sack. So if Crosby hits him first and Wilkins falls on him, it's a cash. He doesn't have to get there all by himself. I think it's a great number. I see both of these guys getting home against Herbert. So, yeah, give me the plus 185, perhaps, sack. Corbin, like Justin Jefferson, can't go wrong on this one. Talk us through it. Yeah, I, lo I love the spot here for him. So, obviously, the Giants are just not very good. They're not good against the pass. Their secondary is shocking. And Justin Jefferson had a down year by his standards last year, partly due to the injuries and the quarterbacks that he had. So I'm expecting a huge comeback here out of him. Uh, same way that I mentioned for Devontae Adams, but they're going to they're gonna want to keep him happy. There's no point your star player getting unhappy. So they're going to still get him the targets. They're still going to try and get him his yards. And this is a really low total for him. I think he's going to soar over 100, quite honestly. This is a winnable game for them. So that like, I don't see, there's no reason for him to like rest at the end. Donald starting, I think they're going to, as I said, I, I think they're going to want to build up his confidence. Perfect team to start it at. Throw it to Justin Jefferson, get, all the players singing from the same same hymn sheet. He's the number one weapon by far. And he went over in uh, three of the last four to end the season. The only one he didn't was against the Packers, where I've mentioned before that Jair Alexander normally has good success at home versus him. So I'm going to take Justin Jefferson over 81 and a half yards. I think this total is extremely low. Love it. There's your three best bets for, for today's show. Baker Mayfield over touchdown, uh, over one and a half. Christian Wilkins over a uh, quarter of a sack, so he just needs to get half sack. And uh, Justin Jefferson, over 81 and a half receiving yards. Thanks so much, guys, for joining us. A um, couple questions here real quick. Uh, Jim, wanted to know about uh, Micah Parsons' uh, sack prop. Uh, Brown's third string left tackle. Mm -hmm. I, uh, what do you think about Micah Parsons? I, I was kind of surprised. He doesn't quite get as many sacks as you would think. Um, he so doesn't. He th yeah, he doesn't. That's weird. the thing. And he's always lined as a full sack. So uh, we've been down this road. Um, yeah, you could. I tend to try to stay away from the big name guys unless I really see a massive advantage. I mean, they also move Parsons around so much. It's not like he's just going to line up against the backup every single play. I don't think we're going to see the strategy that Kansas City did with Chris Jones where they let him pick and choose. Uh, Parsons can't go to the inside and play D-tackle. So <laughs> he's going to have to kind of be stuck on the outside. So I would wait and see what Parsons. Um, and I don't think the number's that great either, though, right? Do we happen to post the number? Yeah, you're always you're always paying a premium price. Uh, yeah, really. so I, I really try to not lay minus 175 or higher unless okay. it's a real obvious one. So that one's a pass. And then uh, Javante Williams' receptions, two and a half, uh, seems too low. Uh, it, it, it could be. It could be one of those where if he's out there the whole time, yeah, he just falls into three, but I, I get the feeling they like McLaughlin a lot. And with Sean Payton, God, they just, like, he even will tell you, like, oh, yeah, we just, you know, rotate roles and whoever's going to be, you know, we're going to get the most attention. I find Sean Payton running backs really, really tough uh, to try and figure out. So two and a half, it feels like about right. 
Um, I'm not sure if there's going to get, uh, you know, value one way or the other. So um, that one would kind of be a pass for me. Not the most sexy answer in the world, uh, but that's it. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for us. Remember, practice good, bankroll management. Uh, yes. If you are terrified about how many bets you have today, you have too many. If you are terrified about how much mm-hmm. money you have, you have too much money on some of these bets. We always want to uh, make sure we protect those bankrolls, especially if you followed our, our UFC plays last night, you're up. Uh, you're having a really, really good weekend. So um, let's uh, let's make sure we're cautious and make sure we're playing plays uh, that we really, really believe in and we find good value, not just plays uh, on our favorite team or things like that. It's too important. We work too hard for our, for our bankroll to, to blow it on NFL week one. So <laughs> let's have a great week. Uh, leave in the comment section your survivor pick. Always love seeing those. Leave us your best bet, whether it's prop, spread, whatever. We always like seeing those. So good luck on your place, and we will see everyone later. Good luck.